All right, guys, so we got Blake in the cab here. Everybody's telling me, you know, it didn't have power. You didn't have power, it's not the power on the coil, and I just, I gotta prove it, I guess. So, go ahead, Blake, push the shuttle forward. There's the power going to that coil, 14 volts. Now, what happens, it sees that, it sees that it's not having anything going to ground, so what it does, it defaults and kicks that coil back out. But that, that thing's getting power. Um, keep it running, Blake. Let me check the ground. Okay, there we got good ground. It shouldn't make any difference. So go ahead and push the coil, push that handle forward. Yeah, so we got good ground too. All right, go ahead and shut it off for a minute. Let me plug it back in. Like I said, there's something physically, there's something physically wrong with the transmission. I'm gonna back probe that wire and we're gonna start this thing up again and I wanna see what happens when you try that again with it plugged in. Go ahead, Blake. doing you're upshifting with the button and downshifting okay so yeah it, it's working fine as you can see every time he upshifts and downshifts he's in a different gear as soon as he goes back to that pack then we're getting full battery voltage to that coil so the next step we're going to do here is we know that electrically working it's working fine. I'm not getting a pressure drop on the main line, which doesn't really mean anything. What what I think is happening is that pack slipped so bad, I think it's just slipping. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to dump the oil on it and verify our suspicions, which I think the transmission shot. All right, guys, so we swapped the... The one coil that controls uh, two and four on the high ratio pack with, we basically switched the low ratio pack solenoid valve with the high ratio pack solenoid valve. We know we got power and ground to it. We know we've got, um, so now we know that we've swapped a known good solenoid with it and we still, we still have no pressure going to that pack. Uh, what I don't quite understand is why the main pressure isn't really dropping off when we select it. I might check uh, Just to kind of just to see here Pressure eh, about a hundred gear we in right now. We are in first gear. There's first gear. Two hundred psi in first gear. Let's go to second.
getting a drop in mainline pressure like I would ex I was expecting to get, you know. I got a new partner with me. This is Colton. Colt 45. This is my son's. He's got a uh, a lab there named Eva, and that's one of her pups. He's about I don't know maybe seven eight months old. I just love the hell out of him. He wanted to go today, and he jumped right in and. Well, here he is, him and Daisy Duke. He stayed home. What do you got, buddy? Typical puppy, you're gonna be into everything, huh? Colton, what do you got, buddy? Colton. Yeah, okay. You found one of my... You found one of my plugs, didn't you? Yeah. You don't need to be swallowing that. No, you don't need that, you wild man. Well, I'm gonna get to work here. Get a here. chunk of uh, radiator hose that we're playing tug of war with. Pull, pull, Daisy, pull. <laughs> She's not even trying. He keeps choking up on it. Now you're nose to nose. <laughs> She's not turning loose of it. He keeps choking up on it and re-grabbing it. <laughs> I know I'll probably catch a bunch of grief from all the JCB experts that do this stuff every day, but. I don't know what to explain to guys. I don't work on the same thing every day like you guys do. I work on a multitude of different things. So I do things, sometimes maybe they're not quite right, but I get them done anyway. So let me get my light here. Maybe it'll telescope up a little bit further. I had to take this cooler part of the way apart. Take the fuel filter housing off of here because the stupid drain for the radiator there's the drain for the radiator down there so I had to take all that crap apart so I could get in there and pull the drain out for the radiator it's a real brilliant idea where they put that anyways <laughs> so what you're supposed to do there you'll leave I mean I think their whole theory was that they leave everything on here and then you pull the whole thing out as an assembly there's a bunch of little bolts that go in the side frame here. And, uh, pull your charge air cooler hose off here like I've got. I got that one off there. This is your, uh, this is the other charge air cooler hose. This is actually the, uh, yeah, this is the one coming out of the turbo. It comes into the charge air cooler, comes out of the bottom of the charge air cooler, comes back into the intake right here. So just pop it off of here. And then leave your fan assembly and all that stuff on there. Uh, see, this whole thing's loose now. I asked my customer, I said, well, these guys on, on the internet say, do it this way. And he goes, you do it the way you think it's easiest. <laughs> You're the one doing the work. And he says, the one you rebuilt three or four years ago works just fine. Gotta unplug that fan speed sensor right there. And it's not one unplug, but all the hoses there, leave them on that, and then leave the whole thing on there and just lift the whole thing out as an assembly. Yeah, let me get this fan speed sensor unplugged. I got the lower radiator hose off. And I gotta see what else. There's a couple other little hoses running back there I gotta take off.
of course, these Deutsch connectors get full of dirt. You can't get them loose. Guys, I'm, I'm gonna change the way I'm gonna do it. You know, I I think I am gonna leave the engine in there. Okay, so the first time I ever did one of these, I pulled, you know, the what they call the cooling package, basically the, the radiator coolers and all that stuff off of there. It's got a hydraulic fan on it, and it's got a coil, a coil for a Ford and a coil for reverse 
on it um, to reverse the oil flow on the fan motor. Anyway, whatever. Um, so the first time I, I did that, I pulled that, I pulled that, you know, I know, I know in England, I think they call the hood the bonnet. And this, I don't know what the hell they call this, the, the case for whatever the protection there around the engine, pull that off. And then on the one I did the first time, I pulled the pumps out, I pulled the drive lines out and everything on the transmission, and I pulled the engine and transmission out as an assembly. But I, now that I'm looking at this, okay, so the second time, second time around I did it, I thought, well, I'm going to pull the transmission because everybody's saying, oh, you got to just pull the transmission. So maybe I did, I don't have a book. My, well, the book you guys saw me use the other day, all it does is tells you to go to another book to disassemble it, you know, and it's, you know, one of those deals where you got to buy uh, $3,000 worth of books or, you know, spend hours and hours on the internet looking for the right books. Anyway, um, I didn't do it with a book either time on the disassembly. Just, I put it, did it all just like this, just kind of winged it. Um, but I'm going to try it. I think I did it. Maybe I ought to pull this transmission like this. This will be way easier than what I did last time. The second time, I didn't pull any of this stuff off right here. I just pulled the transmission out with it in the machine. You know, with none of this off. And man, I had a hell of a time getting to this stuff over here. But I was probably doing it wrong because I can see now if you pull that cooler off and you pull this, whatever the hell this thing is that surrounds the engine here off, you can kind of get right in here now. And pull a lot of this stuff off. So I think I'm gonna try it this way. So yeah, let's let's do that. I already got a couple of the speed sensors unplugged. One here and one here, and I uh, got some lines to take off. There's another, there's a pressure switch or something up there. But uh yeah. We'll get the drive lines out of it. Um I'm gonna clean up and sop this uh nasty oil mess up from everything dripping while I was taking everything apart. I've got to be everything capped, I think, that I can. I got all these lines. Light for it. Get it down here a little better. There it is. I think the washer fell off now. Down here, though. Okay. I've got the inspection plate. This has got a what they call a bevel gearbox on it. So the flywheel comes out and there's a couple bevel gears that mesh with each other and that's how you change the 90 degree, 90 degree uh, offset of the engine and transmission and how they rotate. So I got the little plate off here and I'm just on the ring gear with a little bar and just rotating it around to the next hole. So that's loose there. Okay. Uh, I think we're pretty well unhooked from this side. Let's go over to the other side now. Drag all our lights and cameras. And over here. Okay, now you got to take this, make the park brake. You got to take that loose. All right, so I got to get my light. My hook's gone. I must have broke the hook off that light and didn't know it. Clean the dirt off the frame rail there. And you got to pull this plate off right here. And then pull this linkage out of there. I got that off and plugged. I got that line off there and plugged. I think I wound up. What I did is I took both of these amp and all looking connectors here off so I didn't damage them. I pulled it back. Oh, come on, light. Work with me here. It's got a magnet on it, but I don't know the magnet is it working too good. Well, there's a lot of pain on that metal too, so maybe that's not making it attract very well. Uh, 
I gotta get the camera set up somewhere, but no, I just got that unplugged from there. Yeah, we'll just unplug these two and kind of get them out of the way. I think I can unplug that. Is that... Can a guy unplug that thing and just... Is that running all the shift solenoids and all that stuff? And then you can just unplug that and leave all that stuff on there and just lower the whole thing down is what I'm thinking. I'm going to take a little more looking on that. and then, But I think we're getting pretty close to pulling it out of there. No. This will be way easier doing it this way. Now that I wish I would have done that before. And the last time I pulled just the transmission, I didn't even think about it. Just one of those things that, you know, you're in a hurry and you didn't even dawn on you. But that's the way to do it. Pull this pull this hood and bonnet and all this stuff off of here. And then you can get right in here. And I'll probably take the transmission jack and put it, uh, you know, kind of offset to the transmission. And scoot it sideways just a little bit. We don't got to go back very far. And then let it down and then just drag it right out of here. So, I don't know. We'll see when we get there. Put the down here. Okay. What you doing there, buddy? I'm gonna keep an eye on that pup. I got the door open. Make sure he didn't take off on me. He's a he's a lab, so his nose gets to going and gets him in trouble. Silicone did up pretty good when I put all that together last time. Okay. underneath it okay here's your linkage for your arc brake yeah that just unscrews I see let me go get an allen wrench okay there we go Okay, he's down on the ground. Might be come along in that sucker out of there. And this jack don't work for shit on this rough old asphalt floor in this old potato cellar. It's almost like being out in the gravel trying to roll a floor jack on it. I think what I'm going to do now that I've actually got some money, I'm gonna go buy a piece of 3 16 four by eight sheet of plate. And when I do these, I'll, when I'm ready for the jack part of the operation, I'll throw that plate down here, maybe weld some hooks or something on it where I can drag it out with a piece of chain or something. 
throw that plate underneath there and put the jack on top of it. I think that'd be a smart thing to do. Instead of fighting it. the machine up just a little bit here to get the rest of the way out. Let me jack it up. Ah! Oh, jack it up. Ah. It's out of there. Okay. can buy in that jack okay well I tried unplugging this thing underneath and this pressure switch and I broke that so I gotta buy them a new pressure switch for that there's our shift valves and all that but we gotta I might just go ahead and grab this with the crane and well you know what I can get it out here and roll a little better. I'll just roll it right out there, pressure wash it off. And then we'll tear it apart and see what we got. First thing we'll do is pull the valve block off and see if we got a see if we got a gasket on the shift on the a valve block that may be gone to hell on us. First thing we'll check. But usually when you get a valve, even if you got a shift valve block like that, I know on John Deere's. If you get one like that and you're putting partial oil to a clutch pack then you better just go ahead and disassemble it because more than likely you didn't have any lube oil going to it or you didn't have any you know you had partial oil going to the clutch piston so it'll let them slip and it'll burn them up so you might as well tear them down 